Hello, I'm Suzanne Wakehorst. I'm at the Human Interface Technology Lab at the University of Washington, and I'm going to be telling you a little bit about a project that we have ongoing here at the lab called Augmented Tangible Models for Molecular Biology. The objectives of this project are to create new tools for teaching and for doing research in structural molecular biology, and our approach is to take uh, to create physical models, physical prototypes of structures from the protein data bank and add on to them uh, new multimodal mixed reality interaction interfaces. Our research partners include uh, Art Olson and David Goodsell at the Scripps Research Institute. Art Olson, who you see here in the picture, is the uh, overall PI for the project. Uh, Elaine Cohen's group at uh, the University of Utah and several of us here at the University of Washington, along with uh, some teachers at Ballard High Biotech Academy, in particular Jeff Cleveland at Ballard High. And uh, we work together to um, uh, develop these tools and to test them. Our approach is threefold. One, to develop technologies, new autofabrication techniques, new multimodal interaction techniques with those models, and uh, new haptics, augmented reality, uh, and speech interfaces uh, to interact with the models. We also develop uh, uh, objects that we call magic books that help uh, with some of the educational background, the scaffolding that students need in order to, to make sense of these models. So we develop technologies. Secondly, we uh, evaluate them. We, we do educational assessment, uh, both at the high school level and in now at the undergrad level here at UW, and also uh, with uh, biology, structural biology graduate students at, at Scripps. And finally, we test the effectiveness of these uh, models uh, for doing research um, uh, at, at uh, the Scripps Research Institute as well. The glue that holds our project together is called uh, PMV. It's a Python-based uh, molecular viewer, and it allows us to uh, independently at the various groups who are collaborating develop modules that we can then all draw from. Uh, PMV is available from uh, Scripps Research Institute website and, uh, and is uh, free of charge. Uh, one of the modules that uh, we've developed in the course of this project is a 3D printing module that allows us to render molecules on screen and then shoot them off to a 3D printer. And here you see two examples of 3D printers that, that we've been using. One is a plastic uh, uh, monochrome model that's very uh, robust and you can throw it on the floor and it won't break, uh, but it has to be hand painted. Uh, the other that you see on the right is uh, from Z Corp Corporation, and it uh, produces solid 3D models in color, in full color. And uh, an example of that uh, is uh, here's a molecule uh, of a model of uh, superoxide dismutase, and we've rendered it, uh, we've colored it by residue, by amino acid, and you can see uh, along this ribbon model uh, all of the amino acids that make up the uh, the primary structure of this of this molecule, and you can also see the the carbon and uh, uh, excuse me the copper and zinc uh, ions embedded in in the molecule. Uh, we can render as ribbon models. We can render as uh, space filling uh, models like this hemoglobin. We can render as a CPK model where you can see each individual atom like this uh, serine protease. Uh, various uh, other kinds of uh, 3D models that we can create. Um, uh, in addition to that, we can add uh, augmented reality or gra computer graphics overlays uh, using the HitLab's AR toolkit. The AR toolkit is also free of charge. It's available on the HitLab we website and has been used quite broadly around uh, the world. And one of the things we do is we uh, track, we use uh, black square markers to track objects in space. And if you look at this uh, HIV protease model, you'll see a small square. That square is detected by the camera that can tell its real-time six degree of freedom uh, location and orientation, and then can register graphics with this model, just as we're registering uh, that little samurai uh, warrior with the card that you're seeing on the screen. 
In, the diff in addition to uh, the printing module, the AR graphics module, we're also developing uh, force feedback or haptics interaction with these models, both, both interaction with the physical model and with the virtual model. And uh, in addition, uh, voice interaction. Uh, in order to get this out into the classroom, we have to come up with some less expensive ways to do haptics, and so we, uh, we're also developing uh, tools like um, pager motors, pager buzzers built inside of a probe that we can use uh, and, and track in space, and that will allow students to feel the attraction forces, the electrostatic fields on, uh, on a molecule as they manipulate it. Um, the next steps that we hope to accomplish in the next year or so are to uh, create this data probe that I mentioned a, a moment ago, uh, give it some more capabilities, uh, to introduce auditory display of molecular parameters, uh, to get rid of the markers on these, uh, uh, these black markers um, using video uh, analysis, uh, to incorporate spatial gestures, so I might want to change the, the the uh, characteristics of an overlay by maybe shaking it off or doing some other gesture that will walk me through various renderings. Uh, we need to deal with uh, the, the reality that uh, protein models are, protein molecules are generally flexible or more flexible than these models and the production of those flexible models, tracking of them, etc., is uh, the big challenge that we're facing right now. Uh, eventually, we hope to be able to produce these uh, in quantity to be used in uh, classrooms and uh, in uh, custom uh, items, custom uh, uh, prototypes uh, to be used uh, by researchers, uh, which is already happening at the Scripps Research Institute by a number of researchers there. Um, thank you very much for your time, and feel free to contact me for further information. Thank you.